In this video, I'll show you how to create a scheduling application using React and DHTMLX. We'll make a basic scheduler, extend its functionality with custom features, and make it listen and react to user actions in real time. The first step is to initialize the application structure. For this, we will use the Create React App tool. To create an app, run the following command. Then, we'll go to the App folder and run the application with the following command. Our application should start on localhost. The next step is to add our scheduler component to the React app. The first thing you need to do is to add the DHX scheduler package to your project. A free version of it can be added via NPM or Yarn. Then, create the scheduler folder. Here, we'll add a React component wrapper for DHX scheduler. Now, we can create the scheduler.js file with the following content. Then create the scheduler CSS file and add styles for the scheduler container. And finally, create the index.js file with the following content. As DHTMLX scheduler is a regular JS library that lives outside of the React.js world, we have created a wrapper component. Once our component is mounted, we initialize the scheduler and attach it to the DOM. We can also populate it with the data passed via props. Note that since a free version of DHX scheduler has no destructor, we do not define the component will unmount method. That also means that if we remove a component from the React at some point, the instance of the scheduler will stay in memory and will be reused the next time when the component is mounted again. Now, we need to add the scheduler to our app component. Note that we use hard-coded data for this sample. If we run the app now, we should see a simple scheduling calendar with initial events on a page. Let's add some custom functionality to our React.js scheduler. Suppose we need to add a toolbar with a checkbox that will be responsible for switching the time format on the hour scale. We can change the time format using the hour date config in the hour scale template. After that, we need to redraw the view with a new format using a render. Let's try to implement it in React. Firstly, let's go to the scheduler component and implement a couple of presets for the view configuration. Open scheduler.js to add the following code to it. Here, we add the component did update handler, which will repaint the view on updates, and the should component update handler, where we will determine if we need to update the view. And let's add a call to the setTimeFormat function at the beginning of the render method. Now our scheduler displays the time in the 24-hour format. When the hour date property and the hour scale template change, we need to invoke the update of the view. Let's provide users with a UI control for changing the time format. Let it be a simple toolbar and switcher. First, we need to create the toolbar component. To do so, we add the index.js and toolbar.js and CSS files with the following content. Then, we should update the height of the scheduler container to place the toolbar there. Here, we add the checkbox for changing the time format and provide the onTimeFormatStateChangeHandler for a parent component. Next, you will need to add the toolbar to the app component and a handler for changing the event. We also need to update the render method. As a result, we get the opportunity to pass the updated state to our React scheduler every time the user changes the time format. Once we have added the scheduler to our app, we need to process changes that users make. I'll show you how to capture calendar view changes and then pass them somewhere in the app. We'll capture the changes using the scheduler events. Let's see how this is done in practice. Open the scheduler.js file and add the following method. We use a global instance of the scheduler. And since it can be mounted multiple times, we need to make sure that we add event listeners only once. In order to do so, we use a custom scheduler initialized flag. When the scheduler is initialized for the first time, this flag is not defined, and we add event listeners and set this flag to true. This way, we make sure we won't attach event listeners to the same scheduler instance again. That's how we can capture all changes made in scheduler and send them to the parent component. Besides, we need to catch events, create messages for them, and put those messages into local state. To do this, 
we need to update the app component. After that, we should create a component that will display these messages on the page. For that, add the index.js and message area.js and CSS files with the following code. We'll also need to update the height of the scheduler container to place the container for messages there. Finally, let's connect this component to the app and update the render method. Thus, every time a user changes calendar events, we call the promise handler in the app component and update the message area, which prints information about user actions on the page. If we run the application, we will see the following result. Today, I have shown you how to use DHX Scheduler in the React app, configure it, and process changes made by users. Download the full source code of the React Scheduler demo in our GitHub repository. Browse DHX Scheduler webpage and download a free 30-day trial version. Our tech support team will be eager to help you during the evaluation.